Welcome back to Looking at Hollywood. K-Star, our guest today, has, she's recorded hundreds of songs and records. She sold millions of them, as well as appearing in almost every nightclub in the United States. Today, the Wheel of Fortune, I thought you'd like that, has landed on our lucky number. And we're so happy to have the legendary K-Star talk to us. So why don't we eavesdrop with Skippy and K-Star now? Okay, uh... Hmm, Oklahoma. Mm. Yes. And part Indian. I didn't know you were yes, part Indian. Yes, I'm three quarters. Really? Cherokee, Choctaw, and Iroquois. How do you feel about... And Irish. And Irish. And Irish. <laughs> <laughs> How do you feel about the Americans stealing your land from the Indians, really? Come on. You know. I don't think uh, this is the time to talk no, about that, no. but I tell you, uh, it was kind of a raw deal. It was, wasn't it? Yeah. Because you're growing up in Oklahoma? Yes, I grew up in Oklahoma until I was, I guess, about... Uh -huh. And then my father's business took us to Texas. I guess we lived in every town in Texas for at least a half an hour. Okay. <laughs> That's great. Yes. And then we moved to Memphis, Tennessee, and those are the three places I've lived. Those Oklahoma, <laughs> Texas, and Tennessee. At 15, or no, when you were an amateur show, you did an amateur show. How old, what age? You did a, some amateur show, you got sang Are you or talking about an amateur show where you get paid or an amateur show where you just... <laughs> you didn't get paid, Kay. You got well, sang. You got, no, well, you get... Tickets. Tickets. That's a payment of a sort. But um, I sang for an awful long time before I ever got paid. And I was, everybody was getting paid but me. Uh -huh. you know? But in country music, um, it's more important that that you sing or you play your instrument and everything. Right. Do you notice how young people are when they start out in country music? Have you ever seen those little... Little guys, they're not any bigger than this. The hats that they wear, way more than they do. Uh -huh. And they're staggering under uh -huh. these great big hats, playing a fiddle. Uh -huh. And everybody on the side's going, oh boy. It's, there's a joy about being from the country. Country people, my kinfolks could never understand why in the world I got paid for doing what they do every, every Sunday on the porch for nothing. Uh -huh. And they could never understand why I got paid for it. Because it's real. It's <laughs> I real guess. enjoyment. Well, what they enjoy. did was real, too. It's yeah. just that they didn't get paid for it. <laughs> what song? Do you remember the, when you did your amateur shows and stuff, and then you got paid? What was your very first? First K-Star got paid. Got paid. Let's see. I had a 15-minute radio show, and I got paid $5 a week. Oops. Yes. Really? And, and I worked two... Is this in Memphis? Uh, yes. Uh -huh. And I worked at two... 15-minute shows a week. I was still in grade school. But that was a lot of money. It was during the Depression uh -huh. and all that. So that was a lot. My mother was working for $5 a week in a sack of groceries for the WPA. Oh. Uh, that was quite a lot of money. I was paying for all my school books uh -huh. and uh, all of my little fanciful things. Were you 15, 15, something like oh, that? No. You oh, no. You were younger? No. I was way younger. I was singing with Glenn Miller when I was 14 and a half. <gasps> You're kidding. You were <laughs> with Glenn 14? <gasps> Listen, you grow up in a hurry on, in country. Uh-huh. Yeah, you grow up in a hurry. What's the jewel uh, cowboy? The jewel cowboy. That was in my country. That time. was your country time? Mm -hmm. You were doing jewel cowboys? I was doing songs like Wreck on the Highway uh -huh. and... Uh, Mother put my little shoes away. Uh -huh. they, had, they had such wonderful songs in because they were all about people, things you could relate to, things that had happened, uh -huh. you know. The Claridge. You from... Uh, uh, from Memphis. Memphis, that's, that's the hotel. I started at the Peabody. The, the Peabody. Peabody. I was working on the radio station there, and Joe Venuti's band came through. With the fiddle. The Joe Venuti the fiddle, yes. Right. And he needed a girl singer, and the contract called for a girl singer. Right. He had a boy singer, and I think he thought he could bluff his way through, but it didn't work. They wanted a girl singer. They wanted somebody out there with some frills and ruffles and things. And he, they weren't going to let him open. Right. He was flat not going to let him open. Uh -huh. So he had to look for a singer right quick. And I came blaring over the <laughs> network singing whatever I was singing. Right. I had a, had a piano player with me. Uh -huh. That's, that was it. You carried your own piano player? No, no, no. Oh, it was there. It was stationary. Okay. So I was singing on this afternoon, and this, uh, I guess it must have been the road manager, heard me. He didn't see me or anything. Uh -huh. He called the radio station and asked if I'd be interested in singing with Joe Venuti's band. And I didn't know who Joe Venuti was uh -huh. because I was too young to go to the, to the right. Peabody Hotel to... Right. 
He was like, <laughs> it was a society, actually society band, no, wasn't it? No, he was Swing well, King Swing the King. Fiddle. Oh, fiddle. yes. Okay. And uh, so anyway, uh, I got very excited because it was a band I'd never heard of, and they were going to be at the Peabody. And I said, oh, gee, I don't know. I'd sure like to. Uh -huh. And he says, well, uh, who do we talk to? I said, you're going to have to talk to my mom and dad. Uh -huh. Well, there was a <laughs> pause you could have driven a truck through uh -huh. because I think he thought he was talking to an adult. Uh -huh. And uh, so then he got to Joe Venuti and told Joe Venuti what had happened. Joe uh -huh. says, well, go out there. We need a girl singer. They're not going to let us open. Uh -huh. So uh, when Joe took a look at me, and I was short, and I was fat, and I was dark, <laughs> and I looked like an Italian, and that's all he had. And the minute he heard me sing, it was perfect. Uh -huh. It was love at first sight. Dixieland. Tell me about Bob Crosby. Bob Crosby. Tell well, me about Dixieland. I was on the road. I used to, every summer, I would go on the road with Joe Venuti's band. I started when I was 13, and then 13. when I was 14. Mm. Uh, but when you're dark and you're heavy, people don't know how old you are. And my mother traveled with me as my sister. Did your mother encourage you <laughs> in the business? Uh, no, okay. my mother was kind of shy and very sweet and dear, and she never pushed me or anything. Okay. But she wanted me to do whatever was going right, to keep me right. from being frustrated, I guess. Uh -huh. And uh, this seemed to be the thing. And Joe was so kind and good uh -huh. that I guess... If, Mothers can tell when something's going to be good for right. their kids as a rule. Right. So anyway, we traveled with them the first year, all the summer long, and then I came back and went back to school. Then it came summertime again. This time I'm like 14, and we're out on the road, and again, a band leader's manager heard me sing on one of the remotes mm -hmm. from one of the hotels right. we were playing in. And he called up because Bob Crosby needed a girl singer uh -huh. who was not known. Mm -hmm. And that sure was me. Right. <laughs> and he wanted somebody that could sing, you know, right. uh, in tune and, and uh -huh. knew when to come in and when to get right. lost. And uh -huh. So they didn't, again, didn't know how old I was. So he talked to Joe Venuti, and Joe Venuti said, yes, I'll see that she gets there. So he put my mother and me on a train, and uh, we went to Detroit or someplace. Detroit, some Michigan. big city. Okay. <laughs> and I, it was, just was that a, a big city for you? <laughs> well, it was to us. You know. okay. And we didn't know what to do. And if somebody hadn't met us at the train station, uh -huh. I, I guess we'd still be there. Uh -huh. <laughs> I don't know what I'd be doing then. I wouldn't be singing, I bet. Uh -huh. But anyway, uh, they met us and took us. And do you remember a girl singing by the name of Dorothy Clare? Dorothy Clare, not, not quite. Well, she was a cute little thing. She's uh -huh. a little tiny thing. And uh -huh. She wore little dresses that had uh, like striped collars and cuffs, and then she'd have uh -huh. a great big striped bow that uh -huh. matched it uh -huh. in her hair. Uh-huh. Okay. And, and she'd do the boop, boop, did him, down, what him, do, you know, those kind of songs. Uh -huh. And all the cute little things. Uh -huh. And I did all the songs about unrequited love. There I was 14 years old telling people how to live love, their love. lives. Probably never been love. Kissed. I'll tell you how it goes. Why do 14 year old girls singing love songs that they don't even know about? Well, i tell you something. You know. uh, some of those songs are written so well. Country that song, If you just tell the story, you've told them how it's done. Yeah. So <laughs> we didn't worry about that. But it was during this time. Uh huh that uh, we, he wanted a girl singer to take to New York to do, uh, I think it was a summer replacement show for Chesterfield Chesterfield's, cigarettes. Chesterfield's, is or, that Glenn Moore, uh, Glenn Miller, or Ben No, Benny no, Goodman? this this was, uh, this was, was Bob Joe? Crosby. Bob Crosby, okay. He's, that's what he wanted the girl singer for. Okay. So we went, to, uh, we went to New York, and I did, for the whole summer, I did the summer replacement show with the Crosby band. Right. Now, we're finished with the show. Right. Now, my mother and I are all packed. We're going to, we'd been trying to go to the automat. We'd heard so much about it. So <laughs> if I we're going to go to the automat. We're waiting for a hand to hand or something, you know, out through the slots. <laughs> because we can't get to go back home and uh -huh. not tell people you've been to the automat. Right. I mean, we just don't do that. <laughs> so anyway, we got to the automat. We came back, and the story goes that this manager of Glenn Miller's band was in the lobby saying to the musicians, look, I got to have a girl singer. Right. Marion Hutton is going in the hospital. She's going to be gone for two weeks. And after that two weeks, uh, the girl that we're going to use, right. you know, we'll have to give right. up the chair because it really belongs to Marion Hutton. I can't get a, a notable singer who's right. going, who wants to fill in for somebody for two weeks? That Nobody wants to do it. So he you says, did, K-Star. Well, but I, you know, yeah. the story goes that some musician says, you see that little round can getting on that elevator? Uh -huh. Says, that thing can sing. <laughs> uh -huh. And that's how I got that job. So you worked So on I that? sang with his band, but I had to get permission uh -huh. from the school board and from my daddy in Memphis 
to let me stay the extra two in New York, weeks. you have to have permission, don't well, you? Well, no. You have to have permission from the school board, school board? if you're going to be late going in. Oh, I see. Yeah. And, or, or they'll really get on your case when you get back. Uh -huh. So that's what happened there. I sang with the band for two weeks. I didn't have any arrangements or anything. Really? But I had a good ear, and we used to jam things, and we'd uh -huh. do like medleys of songs. You know? uh -huh. And it was wonderful. Did you go back to Memphis after that? Oh, yeah. You went did, back with and your finished mama? school. You went back to school yeah. and finished? Right. How did the Benny Goodman and Glenn Miller thing came along? Tell Benny Goodman that. never came along. Okay. Glenn but Glenn Miller, Miller uh, that was when, uh, that was this man who said, yes. they said, see that little round can getting on yes, the elevator. Yes, yes. That's when I sang. Exactly. I took just, the place of Mel. That's how Glenn Miller came along. Mm-hmm. You well, I more or less came along. He was already there. But you became very popular on that, though. You made a record with him, I didn't made you? two. I was, what was it? One, uh, one was Baby Me, Baby and me. one was Love with a Capital U. Have you heard any of those songs, Annie? Baby no, Me? but it sounds all so great. I mean, it sounds like fate had everything to do with her career. I mean, she had the talent, but uh -huh. it was fate all the way. I can't believe it. <laughs> I think it must be true because I've never really auditioned for anything. You really didn't? Never in my life have I ever auditioned for anything. I've kind of been in the right place at the oh, right wow. time. How did Capitol Records come to, to you? Uh, Dave Dexter, because Dave Dexter. I had been singing with Charlie Barnett's band for a long time, Ooh, about another good one, uh, six good years, one. Yeah. and uh, I had a bad throat. I really had sung over and under and around colds until right. finally I just got pneumonia. We were doing um, a Coca-Cola show every right. week from a different uh, uh, ca camp, you know, right, whether it was right. Marines or the Navy or the Army. Traveling or it was. around during the war. You bet. This and we, every week we would do a show, a Coca-Cola show from a different camp. And we were on those awful of transport planes <laughs> right. that are so cold. These are overseas, all over here, no, in all over the United, United States. States. We didn't go out you of didn't the go country. Okay, go ahead. But it didn't make them any warmer. Those planes, right. <laughs> and or any more comfortable. And I finally, uh, with all these colds and everything, I find the only time I ever fainted in my life, I fainted in the wings after I'd finished doing my part of the show. Uh -huh. Fainted in the wings, and when I woke up, I was in the hospital in the. Right. In the Army Hospital. You had pneumonia. I had pneumonia, and I was there for almost two weeks. But then after that, I had a strange thing happen. Uh, I could be talking, or I could be singing, and without any uh -huh. warning, it just nothing came out. Uh -huh. And it wouldn't matter if I was on the air, or people uh -huh. were dancing, and I'd be singing along. And okay, you've had, some, you've had some tough times in your life, though. Hard knocks. Oh, I think I everybody mean, sort of no, has. No, Kay, no. Kay Starr had some tough times in her life. Come on, Kay. Look back, you know, you've, you, you're a tough lady. You're from Texas and Tennessee or whatever it is. You've, you've always been there fighting. You've had some tough times yeah, in your life. Yeah, I've had to overcome some things, but... How do you overcome those things, Jay? Tell me. How do you do it? Kind of mind over matter, don't you think? If you trust God, you just say, hey, I'm doing all I can. When is somebody going to come down here and help me? Because you really... I never go were... on the stage. I don't say, okay, here I am. Where are you? You know. You gave up some for several years. Disappeared. Well, I... I something... when, when my throat was so bad, I couldn't really sing. I didn't... How did you handle that, Kay? Well, a doctor... I mean, this was your yeah, life. I know. A doc the doctor, he, uh, he paralyzed my throat for about four months oh. because he knew I'd never stop talking, yeah. <laughs> which was the truth. And uh, then when I did start to sing again, I sang with just the piano. Right. And then finally the doctor said, okay, now you can add a bass. Right. And then I sang with that for a little. Then he said, you can have drums, but only the brushes. Right. And it took me almost a year before I was able to sing with a full-blown orchestra. So uh, the year out of my life was at it that was time. Tough. Must yeah. hurt you because a lady well, who I loves to sing out yeah. there and travel around the well, world. I was singing a little bit, but I was I was a little afraid to punch too much. And I'm a, a very I, I sing loud. Loud, yeah. Yeah, I'm a loud. Into singer. each life, some rain must fall. I did that great with Charlie song. Barnett's band. Great, what a great song! Remember that song? I've and, heard it. I've heard it a lot. Sure. And always the hurt you won. The always the one you hurt. Tell me about that one. How did that all, did those two great songs well, those come along? were just songs that I did just with the... Charlie Burnett. You always heard the one you love and into your life some rain must fall. Oh, and those are great Haunted songs. Haunted Town. When I first joined Charlie Barnett's band, I took Lena Horne's place. Can you believe that? Really? Uh, was she with Charlie Burnett? Yes. Le Lena Horne? Yes, you bet. Uh-huh. And uh, I sang, was singing her arrangements. But ign ignorance is bliss. Right. <laughs> uh, I didn't know that there was such a thing. Um, I mean, I did later on, but in the beginning, I didn't know 
what a range was. I thought a range was something you cooked on or that the <laughs> cattle grazed on. I didn't know there was another uh -huh, kind. Uh -huh. And so when they asked me about a range, I said, well, you know, why not? Uh -huh. And as you're young, you think you're invincible anyway. Uh -huh. If they can do it, why sure. can't I do right. it? Well, of that's course right. I can do it. And that's why when I did the thing, uh, Marion Hutton songs, they were way too high mm -hmm. for me. Mm -hmm. I sound like a jazzed up alfalfa. <laughs> I really do on the things. And uh, I did that. And then when I went with Charlie and singing her songs, except her songs were blues songs. Right. And lovely. A, sh a sharecropping blues uh -huh. and a haunted town uh -huh. and good for nothing Joe. Uh -huh. But there were some high notes. I mean, to tell you, I strained myself to get to them, but I got to them. Uh -huh. but the Cornette Club. Tell me about the Cornette Club here in L.A. Well, that had a lot to do in your... Go on, tell yeah, me Yeah, it that. did. And Streets of Paris. Yeah. And um, Eddie's Oasis. These I are clubs that in L.A. were very... Yes. ...in places. I sang on the wrong side of the... I rang, sang on the wrong side of the railroad tracks and the right side of the uh -huh. railroad tracks. But that... Would you say you paid your dues? I hate that word, you paid your dues, when people say you paid your dues. Oh, I don't think you ever stop paying your dues. If things good are happening to you, you just keep going. And I think... If you give back anything, uh -huh. if something's been given to you, which, as she said, you know, God gave me, it must have been faith right. that made me a singer, because I do not know how to read music. I'm, you, you understand? Music I'm confessing. Game? I'm not bragging. But you did write, you did compose a song, though. Well, you can compose a song without <laughs> knowing what oh, you're doing. Oh, okay. 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 People yes, dance true. and don't know what they're right. doing. Right, true, true. People okay. talk and don't know what they're saying. You don't read music. I didn't, a great no. singer like no. you. No, I no. tried one time, and I got so busy trying to remember where the notes went uh -huh. that I forgot to tell my story. Uh -huh. Okay. And I'm a storyteller. You're a storyteller I'm, I'm in the song. A singer is an actor and actress set to music, and you're only as good as the parts you play or the story you're telling. K-Star, The Wheel of Fortune, when they gave you that song, to do it. Capitol Records was Capitol it? Records called, Tell me. woke me up out of a sound sleep, and it was at a time when people were covering records. If they knew that somebody in New York was going to record a song, right, and it was a good song, yeah. They got somebody on their label to quick cover it so that it could come out either at the same time or maybe half an hour later. Right. Well, what Capital was trying to do was to come out at the same time because there's three hours difference between right. uh, the California time yes. and the New York time. Right. So they got me out of bed and got me over there. And since I didn't read music, I had to learn the song right. so that they could get a key. Mm -hmm. They got the key. And all the musicians that they wanted were out playing on a gig or something, you know. Right. But this was like 11 or 12 o'clock at night, so it was only a matter of maybe three hours mm -hmm. before everybody would be finished with the gig. If they could get in touch with them and tell them to come right from wherever they were, right straight to the studio, mm -hmm. and we would do the song. Mm -hmm. So uh, while I th Frank Duvall, I think, was it Frank Duvall that... I think so. I think so. I'm not sure, quite sure. Hal Mooney or Frank Duvall... Okay. Uh, I'm not quite sure. Yeah, I can't remember, but yeah. one, of, one of the people that mostly did my music uh, was writing the arrangements. Right. And they had a Last Supper table, and they had all of these <laughs> copyists there. And he'd get through with the writing this thing, uh -huh. he'd just throw it up in the air, and one would grab it, and he'd copy all the <laughs> So that's where the Wheel of Fortune came, <laughs> honey? You bet you, it was spinning, spinning, and turning, spinning, turning. And you grabbed it. And when the musicians showed up, but this time I'd been in another studio becoming friendly with the song. Right. Because if we weren't friends, uh -huh. I couldn't sing it right. Right, right. So we got into the studio, and it took longer to record the wheel because we had an ac actual wheel. Wheel. Uh huh. A roulette wheel. Uh -huh. And to get that thing at the right tempo, so it would be kind of relatively in the same key as the right. song, you know, it took longer to do that than it did to do the song. Uh -huh. Thousand, you went, you went around a thousand places in 39 states, going to all these wonderful places, radio stations, pushing the song. Yes. It was a big song. One of the biggest in It was America. a war song. Did a you war, know that? It was a war song? Yes. Korean War. See, okay. It was not... Uh, this sounds trifling. And this I'm is not during the Korean be, War when yes, it became famous? Yes. Yeah. Uh, it, but it was not a big war. It did not right. last too long. It, it lasted long enough to get a lot of people killed and hurt. Right. Which is long enough for any war to last. Right. But pe because it was such a short one, most people don't even recognize the fact that it was a war song. 
got a lot of I got a lot of kids named after me because of that song. You've enjoyed entertaining <laughs> the troops. I you? love it. I you and it. Martha Ray. There's another great lady. Yes, Martha Ray. Yes. Another well, but Martha did so much more than I ever she thought about. She was a nurse being. in Vietnam. A real nurse. A real nurse. Yeah. I keep a lot of people, people don't know that. I they said she know. wasn't a play like no, nurse. She no. was a real a real nurse. Yeah. What's the biggest lesson? that K-Star has learned? Oh, gee. Because you've been I think every step you take is a, is a mild lesson. Some of them are a little stronger than others. Huh? But um, I think uh, to roll with the punches, to learn to roll with the punches, huh? and to not take everything uh, personally. Good. Uh, good. If you start taking everything personally, then you become paernoid. You become paranoid, and you're not good for anything. Good. You're married. You have a lovely husband. No, I'm husband. not married. You're no, not married. I have been married. You have been married. You I have, have a daughter. daughter. I have a grandson. You, your grandma. How yeah. nice. Aww. And your granddaughter is. I mean, your grand. Uh, your daughter is a singer. Plays. Well, she's she's too smart to just sing. She 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 is a, a businesswoman. A computer singer. Uh, <laughs> what do you mean? No, no, but she's she's been working for years with computers and what have you, and has twenty or thirty people under her. Oh, my daughter. Yes. This is something you might be interested in knowing. Right. My daughter, Catherine Yardley, uh, was for a time there, and she is in the uh, Guinness World Book of Records, uh -huh. being the wor woman's world champion, long distance hang gliding champion. Oops. Okay. I like that. That's great. <laughs> When did you get married? What years? How did you meet your husband? Oh, uh, which, Woody, one? Woody. which one? Woody. No, we Was don't it? talk about Woody. Oh, you don't the want to talk about one. Woody? <laughs> how, many times have you been, how many times have you been married, Kay? Enough times. Enough times? I said I was going to try it till I got it right. Oh. And I haven't got it right yet. You haven't so got it? I don't know. Maybe I'll do it again. But <laughs> is K-Star... Um, hmm, what? what? You're happy. You seem very happy, Kay. I am happy. Because you've been through a lot in life, Kay, you know. Uh, well, you learned a Are you writing a book me. about your life at no. all? No. Come on, Kay. You I got... can't do that. Why? Too many people have to croak before I could write a book. <laughs> really? Yeah. You have a lot to say, huh? Well, it's not adverse, but I think, you know, just a lot of people that I think are so special and why I think they're so special and, and maybe their mates might not think they're so special <laughs> for the seem, same reason. You <laughs> seem so. to treat people very special, Kay Star. People are special to me. I don't know, I don't know how anybody could work in the business that we're in uh -huh. and not be crazy about people. But it's, it's tough enough. There's a lot of people in the business are not crazy about people. I know it. I know it. I just They're don't not. understand it. I don't know how they can stay in the business. What is your philosophy in life then? I don't really have any philosophy. You call yourself just, go ahead. I just, I love, I love life and I hope that other people do too. Do you That's go back it. south to keep your roots Tight and I, as my mother had a stroke, and she now lives with me. She's 90. She was and, in Texas, uh, was she? Living? No, she was in Oklahoma. Oklahoma. And uh, so I have only a few kinfolks. I'm an only child. I have an only child. Uh -huh. And she has an only child. Uh -huh. We are fading fast. Uh -huh. But uh, it does, it, it, we are very closely knit. What few of us that are left. So you're very close. I have cousins that still live in Oklahoma. I have an adopted brother that lives in Oklahoma. Uh -huh. But... I don't have a big family. I have an extended family of friends. What's some of the songs, looking back, what's some of the songs that you would say, mm, K-Star, this is it. This well, is Wheel of Fortunes. Do you know, Skip, why I'm lucky? I think if you have one thing that belongs to you, you're lucky. If you have two things, yes. you are really lucky. Uh -huh. And after that, I mean, it's really the frosting on true, the cake. True. Uh, I have Wheel of Fortune. Nobody bothers with that song but rock me. Rock and Roll. And I have Rock and Roll, roll Waltz. Waltz. I have Bonaparte's Retreat. Mm -hmm. I have, uh, what, I have... You uh, have many, many down I have line. a lot of near misses, yeah. but those are the three that no matter where, I can't even do a benefit. They want to, they holler it. For no there. money, I can't do it unless, they won't have me unless I'm, they're sure I'm going to do Wheel of Fortune. Four ladies, four. Four oh, gals, four. You four with Martha four. Ray and yeah. Rosemary Clooney. Uh, tell me about that show, Rosemary Clooney. It was and Ro wonderful. Who was also O'Connell? Yeah, Helen O'Connell. Helen O'Connell. Well, there were four of us. It was Clooney mm -hmm. and Martha Ray mm -hmm. and uh, Helen O'Connell and myself. Right. And it was fun. I wasn't one of the original ones. Right. Uh, it began with, I think, uh, Rosemary. Rosemary. I remember. And Margaret White. I think you also worked with Mimi Hines, too, did you? No, did I you? didn't work with You didn't work I with, worked with Kay Ballard. Kay Ballard. Mm -hmm. Okay. But so it's, kind of, we, it's, been, it's always been very delightful. The people that have worked have always been of a level, you know. Uh -huh. It was wonderful. You keep yourself busy. You still work. Yeah. 
You still do people try? think if you don't have if you're not on the big screen or on the television screen or you don't have a sitcom, you don't have a you know, a commercial uh -huh. Uh -huh. that you've either died or quit the business. I haven't done either. I do things all the time. What's your happiest memory in uh, show business? Oh you must dear! Have some I think each memories. time you get a gold record, it's a very happy memory. How many you have? You have. So I have many. three. Three gold records. Mm -hmm. In those days, gold records were. Yes, they really they were. Did. Something. They records. meant they something. Really, you they had, too. Am I right? Yes, indeed, you were. I, with uh, Bonaparte's Retreat, um, I had. Uh, oh, with uh, If You Love Me, which was Edith Piaf's song. Uh -huh. Right. I had uh, 999,000. I mean, I like like about 10 records, having a million, uh -huh. and they no cigar. I did not get a cigar. Never. So close. How about films? Did you ever try to... I don't know. In Hollywood, you're living here. I was under the impression that you could only do one thing at a time. Shows you how dumb I am. Nah. Uh, Look at pa Dolly Parton. I realize you know. that. I realize all that now. Dolly Parton, darling. <laughs> Skip, but this hey, is, star, I'm looking this at is you. after the fact. Come on, after sweetie. I'm looking at you, darling. You and Dolly Parton, honey. She has nothing in common with you. <laughs> darling, you got it all for Wait me. Wait a minute. Come Wait on, minute. honey. Wait a minute. Dolly Don't Parton. get carried away here now. No, K-Star. Come on. He I have you. a place, and she has a place. Her okay. place is bigger than mine. <laughs> okay, but okay. that's okay with me. <laughs> you know, I don't mind. No, she's an extremely talented lady, I tell you. And Peggy Lee lives right down the street from me. Look at all the things Peggy can do. Oh, she's great. She can sing. She can good write actress, songs. Good actress. She's good a actress, good actress. Yeah. Have you ever seen anything she's painted? She's a good painter, too. Oh, God, yeah. she's divine How is painter. she doing nowadays? You know, she's I haven't heard from her lately, but... Uh, She's been doing really good. Uh -huh. She's told me she was going to walk from on the uh, Hollywood Bowl. She says, you watch me. She says, I'm going to walk from the wings to the middle of the stage. And I said uh, to myself, oh, girl. Is that what she said? Dream uh -huh. on. She says, I'm going to do it. You wait and see. Uh -huh. And by God, she did it. What stands out in your mind, uh, Kay, looking back in your life as a child, 14, 15, singer, what's struggling? What stands out in your mind? Now, today, what stands out in your mind as a child? I think the deal that my Aunt Nora made with my mother so that I could be on the first amateur hour. Uh -huh. My mother said, she's only a kid, Nora. She's a child. Uh -huh. And my Aunt Nora said, yeah, but she can sing, Annie. Leave her alone. She can sing. Uh -huh. And so she says, oh, I don't know. She says, my Aunt Nora says, I'll make a deal with you. She says, if she does good, she's yours. If she does bad, she's mine. Uh -huh. And so my mother says, well, you can't beat a deal like that. And I went on the amateur hour and won it. What song did you do? Remember? You remember? Oh, no. you won't believe yeah. it. Go ahead. Potatoes are cheaper. <laughs> tomatoes are cheaper. <laughs> now's the time to fall in love. <laughs> Sounds like a recession song. <laughs> <laughs> I told you. You're going to be. What, what's new and exciting right now in K-Star's life now, right now at this moment? What's, uh, you, I'm just get, getting adjusted to having my mother live with me. Uh, I think when your mother comes to live with you and she's 90 years old, uh -huh. uh, you become the mother and they become the child. And so uh, I'm getting, she's hard of hearing, so I'm now, I'm now working with Miracle Ear and trying to get the telephone working so that she can talk on the telephone. I have a great many adjustments to make, but I'm doing it. Do you still see your old friends? You're on the telephones talking to your old friends? Oh, sure. My Take kids it. got me a, a cordless telephone. Right. You talk and, to your old friends? From, oh, sure. Yeah. And I got an apron with a big pocket, and I carry that thing with me every place I Do go. Do you really? <laughs> Okay, stars, you're a joy. You know that. Uh -oh. I just. You, you have a new record out coming out, or is it just? Uh, tell well, me about Rhino, it. Rhino right. has has put out a, a thing with singers. Have you not heard it? No, mm -hmm. no. Just, oh, I'm just going to ask it you. It is Go ahead. really so good. Tell me. If people like singers, they gotta have this thing. Right. Go ahead. It has every singer of of my era. Uh huh. And it made me so proud. Uh huh. And the fun of it is. Oh, we